Hi all, it's Ziv from Elementor. Today I'll show you how Elementor's Table of Contents widget is the best tool to customize your long form content and make it more successful and readable by search engines as well as site visitors. By using it with Elementor's Theme Builder, like we did here, you can add it to all your site's posts in one go, which will instantly improve your site SEO and help you get those precious featured snippets on Google. So let's dive in and see how it works. I've gone ahead and pre-built four single post templates using the Theme Builder, each representing a season. Let's check out Winter. All our posts assigned to the Winter category receive this template's design. Now, let's add a table of contents widget to this template, which is one of the dynamic widgets for the single post template. I'll go ahead and drag it into the right column. As you can see, we have an organized list of all of our headings that are present in the post. And when a visitor clicks on one, it acts as an anchor and automatically scrolls to that section. OK, great. Now, let's go over its settings and see how it works. In Content, under the Table of Contents, we can change the title. And here, we can choose which headings are included or excluded in the Table of Contents widget. In Include Under Anchors by Tags, we can choose which heading tags are included as anchors. In our case, we will only include the H3 and H4 tags because we added these as heading tags in our posts. I'll go ahead and open a post so you can see where I set them. As you can see, the H3 and H4 headings are set up hierarchically. OK, now that we know where to set these headings, let's go back to our table of contents widget and have a look at the container option. It is an advanced option that allows you to control which containers on your site the mapping in the Table of Contents widget will be applied to. This way, you can add headings from other areas of your site to the Table of Contents widget, such as the footer for example. By default, Elementor excludes the header and footer containers in the Table of Contents widget, and only shows the heading tags that are present in the main content of a document. So, if I want to include H3 and H4 heading tags that appear in my site's footer for example, I need to include the main tag as well as the footer tag over here. These containers need to be set to their corresponding HTML tags as well for it to work. Now let's check out the Exclude Anchors by Selector option. Here we can exclude specific headings in our post from our Table of Contents widget by Selector. In order to do so, we need to add a CSS class to that heading. So back in our post, I'll go to the heading I want to exclude. And in Advanced, under Additional CSS Classes, I'll give it a class. Now, back in the Table of Content widget, type the CSS selector for the class we just added. Cool, now it's excluded from the list. Let's move on to Marker View. We can choose between numbers or bullets. Bullets gives us the option to either hide or choose an icon from our library, which is based on Font Awesome 5. Font Awesome Pro subscribers have access to over 300 new icons as well as 1700 plus duotone icons, which are icons comprised of two different shades and adds an original look and feel to them. I'll go ahead and choose this cool icon, which blends in nicely with my table of contents. Great. Let's move on to the additional options dropdown. We can choose to switch on word wrap, which might be useful when designing your table of contents widget. Next, we have the minimize box option which shows the Minimize icon button that lets our visitors minimize the Table of Content box when not using it. You can also hide it if you like. When set to Yes, we can change the icon over here, either from the icon library or upload our own SVG. This allows us to set two different icons, one for when the box is open and one for when it's minimized. Here, we can set the Table of Contents to be minimized per device meaning that on a mobile, for example, the table of contents will be minimized from the start. Next, we can set the headings to appear in hierarchical view, giving it the indent you see here. When switching this option to yes, you can also choose to collapse the sub-items. Now, let's move on to the Style tab and bring this widget to life. In the Box dropdown, we can set a background color. I'll go ahead and use this color I saved in the picker before. Here, we can give the box a border color and width. But for this design, I set the width to zero. I'll do the same for the radius, so the corners are straight. Now, let's add some padding. And for min height, I'll go ahead and set it to 65VH, so that the table of contents widget will always take up at least 65% of the window's height. 
no matter the amount of items in it. In the header dropdown, we can give this area in the box a different color, but for this design, I'll leave it as is. I'll go ahead and give the header title a light color and set its typography. Here, we can change the minimize icon color. And here, we can set the separator's width. In the list dropdown, let's first change the text color so the items are more visible. Next, style them in typography and set an indent if you like. Let's move on to the normal, hover and active settings. In the normal state, the light text color we set before is already applied. We can give it an underline too. In Hover, the underline setting is set to Yes by default, and you can change the Hover color as well. In Active, I'll go ahead and change the color. This way, when they're reading the post, they'll visually know where they are. Let's move on to the marker options. Here we can give the numbers or icons we set before a color. So I'll go ahead and give our duotone icon this nice color. We can also set their size over here. OK, great. Now let's move on to the Advanced tab. Here, under Positioning, I'll go ahead and set the Table of Contents width to Custom. And in Position, I'll set it to be fixed, so that it will remain in the same position when the visitors interact with it. Then I'll give it a custom width of 25%. And set the horizontal orientation to right. In order to place it exactly where we like, I'll go ahead and use the offset sliders like you see here. Great. Looking good. Now all we need to do is give the table of contents widget a higher Z index than the sticky header, so it will appear on top of it. Let's check it out one last time. Cool. Well, that's it. Now you know how to use the table of contents widget to customize your long form content and make it more successful and readable by search engines as well as site visitors. Have fun playing around and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tips and tutorials. Ciao for now!